So in today's video, I want to show you guys how you can one shot deploy uh, an internet installation. So this time it's going to be super simple since it's going to be one command and it will do everything for you. I did a video on using railway last time, which is a pretty good option if you don't want to go super technical. So if you want to save more money, I highly encourage you to actually install it in a VPS. So we're going to go over the commands and the process as well as how to update your instance of NNN. So we'll go through it step by step and the link to the script will be in the description. So let's go ahead and get right to it. So let's go ahead and get through this installation. Everything is going to be available on my GitHub repository here, which is going to be in the description of this video. But I just want to go ahead and walk you through the process so you can understand what's happening here. So I went with Contabo here, which you can see that I have an existing instance, which I only have one in this case. So we're just going to go ahead and navigate to that installation. This is where I can see all the information about the installation, the IP address here and then the default user, which is true. You can also see the plan, right? which is the four cores and VME. By the way, this is using the Ubuntu 22. If you're curious what the installation is for this particular instance. So just to be safe, use Ubuntu 22, which I'm using here. So otherwise you're gonna have to modify the script a little bit to be able to work to this. So the first order of business here is you need to create a DNS record, which is pretty important. You wanna do this ahead of time. So pick a subdomain. So if you're planning on putting it on your domain, just pick a subdomain where you want the installation to be. In my case, it's going to be nnn.leancodeautomation.com. So if I go here, you can see that I don't have any existing installation on this server since I just wiped out the entire server just for this tutorial. All right, so there's nothing that exists here, but I have everything set up in my DNS already. So, so that's going to be the first step that you need to do, you know, once you get a VP, VPS instance running. So the next thing that you need to do is you need to copy this IP address, right? So this is where we're going to be using when we set up our DNS to point to this IP address. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and we're going to go and switch to where you manage your DNS. Uh, so we're going to go and go to your DNS settings. So it could be Namecheap, it could be GoDaddy, whatever it may be. So you're going to have to go to your DNS settings and you're going to have to add a new record, right? So once you're here, you're going to have to pick the record type of A. So A, if A is not selected already, you have to select A. The name is going to be the name of the, the subdomain where you want the NNN installation to be. So in my case, it's going to be NNN. So I'm going to put NNN here and the value is going to be the server IP. So it's the same IP that you just copied earlier. It's going to go into this value. And the time to live in seconds is completely optional. You can put a lower number here. It doesn't really matter. And we're going to go ahead and hit save, which is going to add the DNS record into that particular domain. Once that's out of the way, we can go back into my, my steps here. So once you have created the DNS record with this information, we're going to go ahead and do the step 1A, which is to create a public and private key. So this particular step is completely optional. You don't have to do this if you want to stick with the password route. So if you want to access your VPS server using your password, you can totally skip this. But if you want to create a public and private key, you can uh, type this command. I'm using Windows uh, for this demo. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how that works. So I pulled up a terminal here in Windows, which is a PowerShell. I'm just going to go ahead and paste that command. And this is just going to generate a public and a private key. So there's a couple of arguments such as the type of algorithm used to create the public and private key and also how strong the key are going to be. We're just going to go ahead and hit enter. And this is going to create a public and private key. And then you can see here that the path for the public and private key is going to be saved at. So if you want to rename this to something else, you can feel free to do that. Or we can just go and stick with defaults. It's going to be the first key that I created on this machine. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with the ID name, but feel free to name it however you want. So when I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And then the next prompt is to enter the passphrase. So if you want to add or include additional security for this by including a passphrase, you can feel free to go ahead and enter a passphrase. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it blank. And just for simplicity, we're going to go ahead and hit enter. Hit enter again a few times just to confirm. And then this is going to create a public and private key on this path, right? So you can see the fingerprint. 
So if you open up the folder where the SH key has been created, you're going to see two files in this directory. One is the private key, which doesn't have a, an extension. And then the other one is the public key signified by the .pub extension. So we're just, we're just going to go ahead and right click that. And we're just going to go and open up in, in Notepad. And we're just going to take and copy the contents of that file. And that's going to be your public key. So we're going to go ahead and paste it into our VPS account. So once you have that copied, we're going to go back into our VPS provider here, which I'm using Contabo. So in the top right, we're going to go ahead and click on this three dots right here. And we're going to go ahead and click on reset credentials. And this is where, you, if you want to reset your credentials or your password, this is where you're going to go. So if you want to reset your password, you can enter it right here. I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to go to switch to SH key. I have multiple keys here. So if you want to reuse the same SH key across different instance, feel free to add in store the SH key. So, you, or you can just do a one off here and just, in, just put in your SH key and then store it for this particular instance. And this is pretty much it. So you can go ahead and paste the SH key here. Once you get your SH key in place, we're going to go ahead and hit tab to get out of the screen. And we're going to go ahead and reset credentials. And then it's going to give you this warning right here. I have security stored or remember the password. So this is just going to warn you that this is going to completely just reset your credentials. So we're going to go ahead and hit confirm. So this is going to take a few seconds. You're not going to be able to get in into your machine right away. So you're just going to have to wait, you know, maybe a minute. Just wait until it resets completely and then you're going to be able to access your machine. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to log in into that machine. We're going to be executing this command right here, shroot at the server. So you're going to have to go back into your server and copy that, that IP address once again. If you, so we're going to go ahead and go back into the command prompt here and we're going to go ahead and do sh and then space root at and then we're going to go and specify the IP address and we're just going to go ahead and hit enter. All right. So first time you log into your server and you're going to be, give you this prompt right here. Are you sure you want to continue connecting? We're going to go ahead and type in yes. And then it's just going to go ahead and add the IP address into the known hosts, which will allow this to be accessed without having to prompt you in the future. All right. So once you're in, you're going to see the banner right here, and then you're going to see the root. So the first thing that we need to do here is we're going to run this command. So I'm going to go into the step two to be able to execute this. So I have two versions here. One is for SQLite. So using NNN with using SQLite as a backend database to store the workflows and other things that needs to run the end installation. The Postgres currently is not working. It's still a work in progress. So I'm still working on this. Let's check back in in the future once I have it fixed. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and stick with the SQLite command here. It's going to go ahead and copy this. But before we proceed with the actual installation, I'm just going to go through the, the process here, what this script does. So it's going to go ahead and just download that script, that's H file from my GitHub repository, and it's going to allow it to be executed. So as you can see the CH mod right here, which is basically allowing it to be executable. And it's going to go and run that command automatically. So just a one shot command here that does everything for us. So download and then allow it to be executed. And also it's going to go ahead and execute that particular script. So what this script does is going to create or install the Docker and Docker compose installation. And then it's going to go ahead and create a project directory and set up the necessary configuration file. It's going to create a volume file and also the environment variable where we're going to be storing the information specific to our NNN installation. And then it's going to ask you to also run the containers at the end of the process. So we're going to go ahead and go back to our server. Once we're going to go ahead and just copy that command. And then we're going to go back to our server and it's going to go ahead and paste it. So we're going to go ahead and just hit enter. And it's going to go ahead and run it. And it does the entire work for you. So this should only take a few seconds. All right. So it's going to offer you to, to edit the env file. We're going to go ahead and hit yes. All right. So it brings us into the nano where we can essentially edit the file from here. So this is going to be the env file. So we're going to have to specify and change the example.com here into your actual real domain. So we're going to go ahead and change this to my domain. And then I'm going to leave the subdomain as NNN since 
that's where I want the insulation to be. And feel free to change the time zone here to whatever time zone you add. And then I'm going to go and change the email to my specific email. So I'm going to go in my email right here. This is probably the, the longest part of this process since you have to enter this information. Once you're done, you're just going to go ahead and control O to be able to save this and hit enter and then control X to get out of that. Right. So the next part of this process is, would you like to start the containers now? Right. So we're going to go ahead and type in Y. And this is going to run the Docker Compose up in detached mode. So we're going to go ahead and check it out. So now it's going to be pulling the images from, from Docker repository. And it's going to go ahead and just download that to be able to execute the Docker Compose file. So it's going to go ahead and do that and pull all the images that's required to run this Docker Compose file. So this will take only a few seconds. All right, so you can see that the network has been created or started and also the container for the traffic service has also been started as well, as well as the for the NNN, right? So container started in detached mode. Just to verify that everything is running, we're going to go ahead and do a list here. We're going to go and switch to the NNN traffic. I'm going to hit tab here. Go ahead, CD to actually where I'm at. It's LS, we're going to go and switch directory to NNN. All right, so once we're here, we're going to go ahead and list out the folder, which you can run a Docker Compose PS just to verify that everything is running properly. So you can see here the, the NNN traffic has been running and also the NNN installation also is running. So if I go and refresh my, my server here, which I already did, you can see that you have a fresh installation of NNN. There's no warning whatsoever. If, if in the future, if you want to update your NNN installation, uh, you can go ahead and do a sudo docker compose pull, which is also in the documentation already. All right, so there's really nothing to pull here since everything, we just installed the latest version of NNN. So I have, I believe I have some, yeah, I have some instruction here on how to do so. So once you navigate into this folder, you can do a sudo docker compose pull, which is will pull the latest version of NNN. And then we're going to have to just go ahead and shut it down. And then we're going to go and bring up it again. So that's how you update your NN installation. So do a Docker Compose pull, which will pull the latest images. And then the next thing is we're going to go and do a Docker Compose down, which is going to temporarily bring the services down. And it's going to go ahead and stop it. And then the next step is to do a Docker Compose up. And we're going to do a detached mode. So it's going to start up the containers once again. The new updated images for that container is going to be executed. And now we can go back into your installation. And everything should show up. So once you're in, you created your, your password and your username. I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and close this. Let's go ahead and skip this for now. So first thing I like to do here is to make sure that everything's working properly is to just to add a webhook here so make sure that we can access the uh, our installation via webhook so i'm going to go ahead and add the webhook and we're just going to go ahead and copy that url that we got we're going to go ahead and listen for test events and i'm just going to go ahead and open up a new tab here on my browser and we're going to go ahead and hit enter and if i go back into my installation here you can see that it was able to receive the call from a different browser tab or you can use any type of services to be able to make a call to this webhook. So everything has been completed. Everything it's working properly. So that's it. So if you like this type of video, please go ahead and hit like and subscribe. The script is completely free and available on my GitHub account. So I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.